Have you ever heard of the Pickerings? I know some of you have. They know their stuff. Whether you believe them or not, whether you see eye to eye with them or not, they know eschatology probably better than anyone else I've ever met on the entire subject. Now, we're not here to cast stones. We're not here to vehemently disagree. And I wasn't here to absolutely positively jump on board with everything that they were presenting. But I will tell you this, prepare to have a feast. And you can nibble, you could partake like a ravenous beast. Do with it what you will, but stick around and learn because there's a lot on the table. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the last dispensation. You happen to be living in it. Okay, folks, welcome back to the program. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for this to happen. And it's not because they are uh, not busy because they are. And that's the reason they haven't been here yet is these people are on the go and they are fascinating, fascinating subjects. And I'm so thankful that they are here. This is Farrell and Rhonda Pickering. And a lot of you have already uh are very familiar with them from the firm conference and other venues that they frequent. Uh, they, they're they not just um, idle speakers of eschatology and timeline things. They actually go to Israel. They go to places. Um, don't know. You, you got to have the money to do that. So that is crazy amazing. But uh, Farrell and Rhonda Pickering are a couple known for their extensive work on biblical prophecy and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Farrell Pickering, uh, that is her husband, studied engineering at Southern Utah State College, Southern Utah State College, S-U-S-C, and is recognized for his skills in spatial reasoning and conceptual logic. And I was mentioning that earlier, and I go, I do not know what that is, but maybe he'll tell me later. You're about to find out. Okay. <laughs> exciting he has a deep interest in the scriptures numbers and science which he combines to explore uh the relationships between celestial and earthly phenomena and the word of god Rhonda pickering that is his wife has over 30 years of experience teaching seminary and administering private schools she is a passionate student of the book of isaiah you have to be passionate to love Isaiah, <laughs> the ancient <laughs> feasts of Israel and biblical astronomy. Her studies focus on the symbolism and types found in the scriptures, particularly in the Book of Mormon and the Hebrew calendar. Now, together, the Pickerings have developed uh, a, a very profound appreciation for all of this and have studied it extensively. Uh, the plan of salvation, exaltation, uh, which they believe is reflected in types and shadows. I love types and shadows um, because you can find them throughout the scriptures and types and shadows are, uh, they are, if, if you study and study, you find out that they are more of the word of God than anything. And um, they are dedicated to sharing their discoveries and insights with others, aiming to provide a hope for future generations. Um, without further ado, welcome so much to the program, you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so where do we begin? I know I talked to you, Farrell, on the phone, and I, I talked to you briefly, uh, Sister Pickering, Rhonda, uh, for, uh, and we're, we're going to hit on, um, well, go. you guys take it away. 
Okay, I, I think it's probably a good place to start is uh, is back at the story that built up to Rhonda at, giving me a birthday present. That's what probably, <laughs> that- and she started in Isaiah, great Aubram Gileadi fan. She actually did so much work on his work that she actually did a work of her own on Isaiah. With his with generosity. His, yes. his generosity and his approval, actually, which he don't give readily. So <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he actually has in pretty much uh, allowed us to do this all and talk about his work he without, work without you know, any argument, meaning he doesn't, he actually enjoys us using his stuff. So, because we give him a lot of credit. And if that, I think you should hold the book up and let everybody see it. I'm actually getting ready to quote a verse, but yeah. She she compiled this great work in Isaiah, and that's where it all kind of began. And then it led to the story I'm going to let her tell. So let me just explain really quickly that my goal was to take Avraham Gileadi's fantastic work and make it for teenagers. So it's called Isaiah Illustrated because we go through all the literary structures, we chart them out. There's a hundred pages of colored charts. And so anyway, I'm, I'm all about Isaiah for the kids. I would argue that it still has to be a very interested kid. (laughs) (laughs) Isaiah is not for the weak of heart. I'm an interested kid. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so I'm going to let her talk about that and what led into the discovery of Daniel's numbers, which is our other book, um, which is, uh, Understanding Daniel's Timeline, Prophecy Unsealed. And this is a result of most of my work. Right. And so, so you have to bring them all we brought them all together. And that's right. what brought us to where we are. So what happened was, you know, I was studying the feasts of Israel, which are in scriptures called the prophetically appointed times. They're appointments that Jesus Christ has made with the earth typologically. And, uh, As I was studying all these, I was going through all different uh, versions of end time prophecy. And I had spent like three months charting out in Excel, all these these 70 week ministry of Christ and everything. And then uh, we were was reading along in the Book of Mormon and he uh, called me on the phone and he said, "Uh, we have a problem. And uh, he says the 70 week ministry isn't, isn't correct. Right, right there in uh, Doctrine and Covenants, it says that his ministry was three years. And I was so frustrated that um, I had spent so much time going through the entire New Testament, charting all this out, that I, I just threw my hands up in, my, in, in the air and I says, okay, you figure out Daniel's numbers. So for his birthday that year, <laughs> <laughs> you guys I are gave, geeks, aren't you? You're uh, I, gave him, <laughs> I gave him a present that was for him, for me, for his birthday. And I gave him an astronomy <laughs> program. And I said, okay, you you do this. I know you Take can Take this astronomy it. program and figure out Daniel's numbers. And they, if you're not familiar with the numbers, it's uh, the 1290 days, yeah. the 1335 days, the 2300 days. And of course, then John refers to 1260 days and time times and half a time and all these things that are going on that's what she laid in my lap yeah I said, I'm gonna finish Isaiah that for the kids you do Daniel's numbers and so that that was an adventure that that was filled with a lot of blessing from heaven and that was actually mostly begin as far as Daniel's number side you've been doing Isaiah for probably 30 years uh, uh prox area and I would I was doing you know, my work and actually when she first introduced what the Bible refers to as the feast of the Lord, um, in the translation of the King James, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Cause she was using all these, uh, the Hebrew names, which is Shavuot, you know, and Shibua, Sukkot, all these names. And I'm like, I'll never keep this straight. Uh, you can't do English. I, I don't speak English well, you know, and you want me to speak. I, I speak mathematics. And yeah. when you say spatial concepts, I I can visualize the phases of the moon. And that's how I learn is very visual, very hands-on. I, if you've seen my house, you'd understand. I, I, I built a castle-looking house because I just am such a visual guy. You well, know? you're an artist, right? I'm very 
3D conceptual. And that's, that's what she gave me the astronomy program. She wanted me to figure all this out. <laughs> but if you actually go to the words in uh, the Hebrew instead of in the King James, the word for feast is moed. It's moedim. And that it's very, in my opinion, feast is a really bad translation. Um, it's, yes, they did celebrate, but it was actually more like their conference time. It's like their conference seasons. And the Passover is an absolute print or perfect layout of the last week of Christ and the crucifixion and the resurrection and all of those land on these prophetic what King James translates as feast, but it's actually in Daniel 8.19 translated as prophetic appointed times. So the actual same word that's translated as feast is translated as prophetic appointed times. Interesting. And I probably should explain that the reason he, astronomy is all connected to this is because these prophetic appointments, these feasts of the Jews that, that we relate to as Passover or Feast of Tabernacles or all of these big seven, we call them uh, appointments, they are related to the cycles of the moon and the orbits in the sky. That's the astronomy software. Exactly. So they're, they're very interconnected. I actually would like to read this first um, out of Daniel 8, 19, so that you kind of get, get it. And I'm reading right out of a King James Bible at the moment. Okay. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Okay, at the time appointed. Well, that word in the Hebrew is at the moed. It's the same, I could read it. Uh, and he shall make thee know the end of the indignation. For at the feast, the end shall be. Now that just throws a whole new light on these crazy celebrations that, well, and the, numbers. that the Jews did. Because what you realize is it's not so much the all the little parts of it in one sense are all pointing to the same thing. They're pointing to Christ's rendezvous or his appointments, his appointment book with the earth. That's what he gave us this crazy stuff in Leviticus and Exodus and all those things for is that we would know to type and shadow those to his comings. The first one being his first coming was fulfilled perfectly at Passover. And so that's when we kind of figured out that these days that Gabriel is talking about to Daniel and everything, and he says it's going to be 1,290 days, you know, till the offering of the sacrifices end or all these different things that he's connecting in there. They are counts of days between appointed times and that was key for Daniel's numbers. I should have brought a laser pointer. But on the chart behind me, you see these points, and those are all prophetic appointed times that are linked exactly to the revealed pattern in the Old Testament. That ends up to almost seven years, right? Approximately, right? Actually, but you mentioned it no, spreads almost over a 10 year period if you take everything in account. Okay. With beginning of the daily sacrifice and goes, but the actual part of Daniel 9, 27, that talks about a week of years, actually Ezra clarifies that in his book. Second Ezra chapter Stester, seven. Yeah. Clarifies that a week of years. That's what the Christians refer to as tribulation, tribulation, the seven years of tribulation. It's spoke of in Daniel nine, verse 27. And that is, um, where Mormon scripture starts to tie in. Big yeah, time. where Mormon scripture, or we suppose Latter day Saint scripture, however you <laughs> it's okay. to say it these days. Mormon. Okay, anyway. Well, there is a Mormon, the Mormon thing goes outside the church, the corporation of the church. So, right. Well, I understand the, what you the mean. Mormon, the reason for the Mormon word is so that the, that's how the Christians we think of us. us. Yeah. They, you know, we're the Mormon, right. them. That's who we are. Um, and I guess that's what President Nelson was trying to draw <laughs> back and say, we should be related to Jesus Christ. And I get that. Totally right. agree. We, I mean, he is our focus for sure. You know, Jesus Christ is our focus. And so I understand his, his push that direction. I actually 
agree with it in concept, although once in a while using the old adage Mormon is more understandable for the well, you take less Christmas breaths, time. right? You take less breaths when you say yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so these prophetic appointed times is kind of what Rhonda plopped in my lap. This was back in 2008-ish, okay? She put this in my lap and said, you figure out Daniel's numbers. And so I, I semi started working on that since 2008. But then in 2020, I, I had breakthroughs along the way. I, I First off, I learned that 84 lunar cycles was seven years and 10 days, 2,550 days. And that matches if you add two of those numbers together. If you add 1,290 and 1,260 days together, you get um, 1,200 or 2,550 days. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 2,550 days is seven years yeah. and 10 days, okay? And that begins to be fascinating when you understand that the Feast of, a, or the Day of Atonement is 10 days exactly after trumpets. trumpets, which would mean that if you start on trumpets seven years earlier, go seven years forward, add 10 days to the Day of Trumpets, you have... You landed added Mount of Olives. <laughs> Daniel's numbers, and you've landed the Mount of Olives. Wow. Day of Atonement. And so that was some of the beginning things. But the problem was, what is that middle date? What's 1,290 days in and 1,260 days back? Or what's, you know, and so you start trying to play with all those numbers. And that's the breakthrough that I had in 2020 of what that middle date is. Oh, and you also have to realize that on a Hebrew calendar, which these feasts are based on and everything, these appointments, they they have leap months that they add in. Out seven out of nineteen years, they throw in an extra month, and and then there's not precise numbers of days in a year, and there's not precise numbers of days in a in a in a lunar cycle, and so there's a lot of variables. the The number of days between each appointment changes from year to year, depending on what, what it, the calendars are doing. And it gets more complicated than that. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, the orbits of the moon, the orbits of the sun, everything is so interactive that it's fractional percentages. So to get those to land exactly, I'll just throw out. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah, took a long time. Yeah. Can I ask you guys something real quick? Yeah. How sure. far do you think we are off from the Jewish calendar? Year-wise? Yeah. Oh, we're 215 years off and we could go. Oh, into, wow. Right? Yeah. We could go into why. Well, it, but we don't have time to do that okay. now. But yeah, if you fine. just go to go online to Wikipedia and type in the missing years and that will show you right there. 160 well, 160 of years got dropped out of their calendar. 167 actually. And they know it. They know they did and they they say that they need uh, the Messiah to fix it because it was they're all about tradition. And so they got this tradition handed to them from Rabbi Jose in about uh, 120, 130 AD, somewhere in the time there. Of and the time, and he deliberately did not want Daniel's 490 week <laughs> prophecy. He's pushing it off. The <laughs> he was so, pushing it off, right? Yeah. Well, let he, me he wanted, die and my children die. And then you well, guys Well, mostly continue. he didn't <laughs> want the 77s of week spoken up in Daniel 9 24 to confirm Jesus Christ. So they had to make it not be about Christ. Oh, and, yeah. and that's a big rabbit trail, how you can go back right. and show all these errors in everybody's calendars. But that's what's so beautiful about what Farrell did using the astro astronomical software. We bypassed all calendars. We just count the days from this day where it is back to the full moon of Passover at the time of Christ. It's it's very easy Well, to it do. gets more beautiful than that, actually. Because not the second work I did, and that's just a quick, fast hit it, is I actually have redone the chronology of the Bible, and I have actually linked it astronomically to the birth of Abraham, to the eclipse of the sun over um, Nineveh. And these are all sure dates that you and can I link. And I link it all, and I've actually locked in the 7,000 years of creation when they started. 
That's a different lesson. That's too. a whole nother discussion. <laughs> oh, uh, well, do you guys have a website? You have a website, right? Yes, we do. What is it? Plug it. Plug it if you want. www.propheticappointments.com. Okay. Also- I, it's you- right here, folks. I'm going to have it right here. So that's why I'm saying it's right here. It's and, right and here. We have, we have a YouTube channel right as well, My Prophetic favorite. Appointments. And we okay, have perfect. every intent to continue to put up the detail behind all this stuff for people that are gurus like us <laughs> that want to, or geeks. Want to, are you geeks or gurus? Geeks, whatever. <laughs> Hope uh, <you're> guru. <laughs> um, uh, and will you guys send me those links so I could put them in the descriptions field, the YouTube absolutely. channel and the website, and they could go there instead of Wikipedia. They could probably go to your website too and find out all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So 2020 was a breakthrough year. Um, right before COVID started, actually, or it was actually started over in China. And that's about the time you had them saying, oh, it's, you know, it's not in China. It didn't come from China. You had the Pelosi and some of those saying those types of things. But right before they got to the point where they were ready to lock us down here in the States, uh, towards the end of February in 2020, um, I've been working on these festivals, trying to link what that middle date would be. Let, okay, let me what's t- the link? Let me just tell you what this looks like. This looks like Excel spreadsheets that are calculating every year by the solar uh, astronomy software where the the appointments land, the feasts of the Jews is what we know them as. Um, and then how many days are in between each of those feasts every year, all the different numbers between all the, and it, this is like a huge spreadsheet. Okay. Wow. Anyway. So, we can't put that up here, can we? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, probably not. They couldn't read it anyway. Um, anyway, so in the process of all of that, I realized that the only date that moves around compared to the lunar cycle is first fruits and Pentecost. Now, the Jews would argue that because they wanted it to be fixed to a calendar, they actually fixed it to the to a particular day. But Anyway, that being said, scripturally, it's the morrow after the Sabbath, after the Passover, is first fruits. And if Passover happened on a Monday, then first fruits would be the following Monday. If it happened on a Friday, it would still be the following Monday. And that's a whole nother discussion about the Sabbath, which is a whole nother discussion, mm-hmm. which it's called the last week or who Sabbath is Sabbath on our website. On our website. Okay. Also on their YouTube channel where you can actually research the Sabbath. Um, and that's a whole tangent. It's also in the book. Um, if you want all these details, but long and short of it is it can change based on the lunar cycle because it's always what is the it? first day of the week after the Passover. So the first fruits it. can change. So not pa- Sabbath. Yeah, I meant first fruits. <laughs> <did> I say? <laughs> okay. You said so, like yeah. I said, it could it can range from seven days after Passover to one day after Passover or two days after Passover. So that makes that one appointed time, the where they offer the first fruits offering. It's actually the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He was resurrected on the morrow after the Sabbath. First Corinthians 15, the first fruits of the resurrection. And he is the first fruits of the resurrection. And in the year of his death, he was crucified on a Friday and he was resurrected on the third day. That's all. Like I said, that's a whole nother discussion that we get into because the, the Jews actually got their Sabbath off too. And we'll discuss that someday, or you can go watch <laughs> or we can, you can go watch who Sabbath is. So maybe you might come on again someday. <laughs> yeah. <Yes>. Anyway, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot. And that's just burying so much, but let's keep it simple as possible. So the only day that could possibly fit to be that middle date between trumpets, trumpets, trumpets. a date, trumpets seven years later, plus 10 days, the only one that could move and fit that middle criteria is first fruits. Okay. It is the day of the resurrections. DNC 88, it talks about the resurrections and it talks about the first fruits of the resurrection um, in, immediately after the half hour of silence, 
Okay. It says that immediately after they'll be caught up. Face of the Lord will face be unveiled. Of the Lord will be unveiled. I could actually read That's that. That's actually the rapture. Actually, That's actually what scripture. the Christians refer to as the rapture. Okay. Is that quote? In fact, I could quote that verse. I got it ready here in uh, Doctrine and Covenants 88. Yeah. Verse 95, and there shall be silence in the heaven for the space of a half an hour, and immediately after shall the curtain of heaven unfold, and the scroll as a scroll is unfolded after it is rolled up, and the face of the Lord is, shall be unveiled. And the saints that are upon the earth who are alive shall be quickened and be caught up to meet him. And they who have slept in their graves shall come forth, and their graves shall be opened, and they shall be caught up to meet him in the midst of the pillar of heaven. They are Christ. They are Christ. The first fruits. That's a big key. DNC 88 starting. That was, they are Christ's first fruits is nine, verse 98. If you Who were shall there. descend with him first? So this has to happen prior to all of that. It, it, understanding that. Even by the doctrine and covenants. Yeah. It has to be before all of that. And it's understanding that first fruits is one of these appointed times. And that appointed time is the day he was resurrected. Well, in the future, that appointed time, that first fruits spoken of in DNC 88 right there, is first fruits, which is Adam on Dahama. And we know it's Adam on Dahama. Okay, because I was going to ask. Okay, okay, I get so it. Center event, because in not only in Thessalonians, but in it says that at that rapture burst that the Christians use. First Thessalonians. Okay, First Thessalonians, they say, that the archangel shall sh give his shout, and that's what causes it to happen. So you do that, and then you go to Daniel, verse. Uh, well, you could go to Daniel, Daniel 12, 18, two, where it says that Michael is the archangel. Yeah, well, we we know he is, but let's 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 just pick up what brought us to this point. So what you're saying is during that, so the, the Latter Day Saints call it a getting caught up. They don't use the word rapture, right? Right. right, exactly. That's so just to let most of them know what the rapture mean, what that word means today. But you're saying Adam on Diamond is going to happen directly right after that or at the almost the I same know, that time. Is the rapture. It's the same time. And oh, I'll show you scripturally. Okay. Gotcha. I'll show you scripturally that it is. Okay. Okay. And first off, let's, let's make sure we understand in Daniel nine, verse 27, what's going on. Here. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. In Daniel nine, two, seven. And he, we're referring to the Antichrist here, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one Shavuah or one week of years. I'm going to add that. And in the midst of this week of years, he shall cause the sacrifice of oblation to cease. There's your daily sacrifice ceasing. And for Which the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make desolate. Now, Christ redefines the way that's written in King James. It says the abomination of desolation. Okay. That abomination of desolation happens in the midst of this tribulation week. That's Jesus' okay? Matthew 24 term. Yeah, he calls it the abomination of desolation. Well, Daniel 9, verse 27 says this is a one seven year covenant the Antichrist makes, and then in the middle he breaks it. Okay, he breaks the deal and he causes the abomination and of now, desolation. And now we're back to why. When Pharaoh finally figured out Daniel's numbers, I knew he was right. Because in Isaiah, when Zion is redeemed at Adam on Diamon, it's the this flip side of a two-headed coin. The other side of it is that Babylon falls. And it's exactly like it was in the ancient Exodus out of Egypt. The Red Sea event. The Red Sea. Was that a good day or a bad day? Right. Well, it was a good day if you were Israel. <laughs> it was a bad day if you were an Egyptian. Okay. That's right. when the greatest uh, army on the planet at that time was wiped out. Now, that event, that deliverance of Zion and that destruction of the wicked or the fall of Babylon, that is exactly the same event. It's the and grand reversal. That's what happens in Daniel's numbers. Adam on Diamond, the redemption of Zion. And the fall of Babylon, the big double cross where the Antichrist sets himself up as, as God, that is the same event. 
So are you saying that maybe Adam on Diamond looks, so that would say Adam on Diamond looks completely different than maybe what Bruce R. McConkey thought it looked like. Oh because my goodness. a lot of people don't realize that these apostles had opinions. A lot of oh, them sure. are their opinions. Uh, there's tons of them. You no, can... I, I wouldn't say it looks different. I mean, for the guys that are at Adam on yeah. Ayaman being delivered, it's right. pretty much like he said. But it's the but the only reason that they are. But there we have after... resurrected beings there. Yes, we have absolutely. translated beings there. We have yes. people that have been raptured. Yes, That's what yes. quote quote okay. yeah. Yeah. Up, quicken. The, the reason right. that quicken. happens, it's all part of when when that happens and those resurrected beings come, that's part of the destruction of the wicked that happens at the same time, just like the crossing in the Red Sea. Interesting. So, so how do I link that also to Adam on the Amun, almost for sure, that can lock it up? Well, it's in Daniel, um, right before Daniel 12 chapter 12 let's just read it as if there was no chapter break okay because we put in the chapter break excellent yes okay so yeah. let's just read it starting in daniel 11 verse 45 and he the same antichrist character shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain yet he shall come to an end and none shall help him and at that time the time he plants his tabernacle between the seas that's the Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea in the Mediterranean, what's between them? Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. Okay, that's between the seas, the it's three triangulated. seas. Triangulated, yep. yep. And so Mount Moriah, the place of the Lord's sacrifice, is between the seas. And the Antichrist will plant the tabernacle of his palace there. Okay, here's the response God gives that act. Okay. And at that time shall Michael stand, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such was never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. There is your rapture event. Coordinating all these scriptures together, okay, shall awake. Lost my place. Some shall to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now that's the same resurrection that DNC 88 was talking about. Yeah, DNC 88 and Thessalonians. All those rapture verses, it's telling you when this happens that this Antichrist standing up and planting his tabernacle between in, in, the seas. In Isaiah 14, he says, I'm God. And then it tells you how long's left. Right here in verse 7. And the man clothed in linen. By the way, that's Michael, the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, and he held his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever shall be for a time, times and a half a time. That is translated Moed, Moedim, and a half. That means three and a half cycles of these feasts, three and a half years. So when Earlier, you said, "Well, we believe in a post-trib. We're a kind of mid-trib people." Because well, no, we no, I don't think we do anymore. I think people have different ideas now about it. Yeah, I think at one time we did. Yeah, well, and I think we've been, pushing. and that was based on Bruce and others. But go ahead. Yeah, well, and we we've, we've been teaching this for a while too, so I'm sure yeah. that. This is making people consider. Can I add something? This is so sure. neat. I'm sorry. I don't mean, I want to shut up and let you guys. No, but I have no, to add. Interact. Go for I'm it. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm going to walk away agreeing with this, but it's absolutely interesting because Joseph Fielding Smith even taught, you know who that is. Sure. That, yes, you do. Um, yeah. That, uh, that the saints, resurrected saints, won't actually dwell on the earth during the millennium. But that's a whole other thing. And if that's the case, then if there if the, there's a mid trib uh, hot catching up or or quickening, that might be a preparation for another three and a half years. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Well, and just to back that up, you know, if the earth is going to ascend to a terrestrial type glory during that millennial reign, right. That is going to open up a lot of interaction between the celestial realm that we don't have right now. Right. And the spirit world. 
Yeah. Right. Well, and, and in Thessalonians, it says, and you are not appointed unto the wrath. And when you actually do a trace of that word, that's the last half. That's the time of this last half of the tribulation. After the, the Antichrist, yeah, I'd love to read the verse in Thessalonians. That'd be great. And the last half is what's referred to as the wrath, because that's after the Antichrist betrays the covenant that he made and he just unleashes everything. Okay, that's when this whole three and a half year cycle is referred to as the wrath. And when Thessalonians says, we're not appointed unto that, that's the part that we miss. It's not the whole tribula- uh, the whole tribulation. Like most of your Christians have become pre-tribbers. Um, most of your Christians. Let's be- just escape all and, of it. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to escape all of it. And so, right. and actually in our chart, we actually show a time of, of America's cleansing being almost seven years, which is starting virtually now. We go into Ezra's Eagle and it's particularly starting at Hanukkah this year uh, is when things are going to really start winding up right after election, right after things get eaten up. If you're familiar with Ezra's Eagle. I just, yeah, I had a guest on that taught me about that uh, about two weeks ago. And it's interesting. And I, this is what I said. I said, for all of you that don't believe in Ezra's Eagle, you can't um, dispute that Ezra is a real scripture and it talks about an eagle and it talks about feathers. What else is it talking about? <laughs> exactly. And it's, and then you combine the Book of Mormon secret combinations. You realize that the eagle is representing those secret combinations, not necessarily the America that was founded by the founding fathers. Right. But the America that's been overrun by the secret combination. Right. The con- okay. conceptually, America is good. When you have evil tyrants running it, it turns into something else. There's, well, and they're behind the scenes running. Right. The secret combination. Well, that's why in Deuteronomy, the kings of Israel were commanded not to build up great armies and not to build up great stashes of wealth is because it's so easy to get that hijacked. <laughs> you know, right. you need to be trusting in God. Yes. yes. Bad guys always get the money. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's the way it seems to go. I mean, but not even, very long, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a endless hole. That just Do you know sucks. who Jan Markle is? No, I, I haven't heard I haven't of her. Heard. Oh, she talks. She always says that, you know, Satan's going to get his day and it's, a, it's an only going to be, what does she say? Seven years or three and a half years. And he does all this for centuries just to get this little time. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. Exactly. So on the verse that I was, was looking at, what wasn't um, the one that we are not appointed to the wrath. That one's in the new Testament. Just yeah, go and find it. But the, but the one I wanted to read to you was the one in Isaiah chapter 10. Go ahead and read that. I'll see and if I can find that. This it. guy that he just read about in Daniel, last verse of Daniel chapter 11, right before Michael stands up and um, he, the, he's the one that plants his palace between the seas in Jerusalem and Isaiah 14, he declares himself as God. In Isaiah, he's kind of characterized by this king of Assyria in the end time, um, using ancient Assyria and their ruthlessness and and their tyranny as a type for him. But in, in Isaiah chapter 10, he says, Hail the Assyrian, the rod of my anger. He is a staff, my wrath in their hand. So Isaiah teaches us that this wrath in the end time, this is actually a person. It, it, he's characterized by this king of Assyria. And, you know, God isn't like the one that's so angry and wrathful. When it's talking about God's wrath, it's talking about God letting this dude do his worst yeah. in, in the end time. And so this time of the wrath is the time when he has set his palace between the seas and is declaring himself God and is trying in Ezra's eagle, he, you know, he's, uh, he rules the earth with tyranny and, and horror. Um, and that, that's, you know, you go through Isaiah and, and basically the way he does this is he double crosses that peace treaty that Daniel was talking about. And he, um, he, it says that he is treacherous that he betrays the covenant. He kind of takes everybody by surprise. And this is the fall of Babylon. And 
uh, I think it's super important if we're going to bring in Ezra Ziegel to go to, um, I'm bringing in Second Ezra, chapter 11, um, verse, well, that's chapter 12. We'll, we'll read it in chapter 11. He says, art thou, the eagle, art thou not the fourth, the, the what remaineth of the four beasts? He's talking about the four beasts in Daniel chapter 7. And then in chapter 12, when he does the interpretation, he says, the eagle which thou saw cometh up from the sea is in the vision of thy brother Daniel. It's the e it's the fourth beast. It's the one with the ten horns. It's the same one that we see in Revelation that comes up from the sea with ten horns. It's the same as the statue in Daniel that has the ten toes. Well, and didn't Joseph Smith believe that the ten toes were... The United States he said of America. It straight out. He yeah, said a straight lot of people don't know that. Face, you know, so bam, bam, bam. You can just connect all these together. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, go ahead. We well, in, in, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the 10 kings, and three of them get taken out. You know, those three ten of the 10 kings, perhaps. This is the eagle heads. Here. Yeah. It'd be the or eagle heads. The three eagle, eagle heads, heads being taken you know? out. That's presidents, right? You're talking yeah. about presidents. Or, the eagle the heads, whatever they are. Yeah, well, I yeah, don't know right. if they, they get elected or not when the new right. world order comes in. I don't know how they do it. But anyway, it's just interesting to make all the connections. These these prophecies are not isolated events. You brought up a good point, Rhonda, that if we're going to look at the past, for instance, you know, uh, the siege on Jerusalem in 70 AD, that was one man, a tyrant. Yes. Tyrus, and, yeah. Right? And yeah, Matthew exactly. 24. I know that we talk about many antichrists in the church and you'll hear a lot of members, right? Say, no, there's many antichrists. There's not necessarily one, but if you go back and you, what is the past a type or is that a shadow? Wait, that's a type. Yeah. yeah type. We're in a shadow here, right? Yes, absolutely. So if you look at types, there's always a single individual, correct? As a tyrant. Well, and, and, in the scripture, this guy is typed out actually in Antiochus Epiphanes. He was the type in the time of the Maccabees right. that actually put an idol of Zeus in the Holy of Holies that the Maccabees rebelled against. That is what's typed as the abomination of desolation. Right. Uh, yeah. In the Maccabees. That particular one. That that, he's, he's that's giving us an absolute one. type of that abomination of desolation that takes place. So we do have that. It means that the abomination of desolation, well, another translation is the abomination that depopulates. And, and you know, that's the stated goal of, right. of the secret combinations is to cut the population. Yeah, leaving think, desolate, leaving something desolate. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, and just so you get exactly what the Christians refer to as the rapture verses, it is uh, forced... First Thessalonians chapter four, verses 16. And you could actually go back a little bit, but let's pick it up at verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Pause right there. That's I'm reading, Michael. Right. I'm reading DNC 88, verse 112. And Michael, the seventh angel, even the archangel. It's him. Get these descriptions right. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ rise first. So here you have Paul in Thessalonians talking about the same verse as Daniel's talking about in chapter 12, talking about the same verse that is revealed exactly. in DNC 88 in verses 95 and 96, all linking together. And then it says, then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with him to meet him in the clouds in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That is all linking to the same event. And it's referring to this Michael standing up event that and, takes place in chapter And 12. I absolutely and, love it because you've got like the Pharaoh of Egypt in the Exodus saying, you know, I'm God. And then you've got Jehovah saying, no, you're not at the crossing of the Red Sea. Well, here in Daniel 11, you've got this, this guy setting up his palace between the seas, um, basically double crossing everybody in Jerusalem. And he's saying, right. I'm God. And you have Michael standing up saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> it's the same thing. I could have right. gone back farther and actually picked up a lot of this 
others of people sleeping. It's all, all this, all this is linking together as one big grand event. And Daniel 12 gives us the timing of that event. And now you've got to go back. To which is that when it happens, you've got three and a half years afterwards. And now you've got to go back to the night you figured it out. So, so do we have three and a half years of peace and three and a half years of, of bad stuff? Right. Uh, the answer is we do not. I don't know that the, the half Jews try to do. Peace. We okay. don't know. The treaty no. is going to be with the Jews and it's going to have to do with the temple. And the Antichrist is going to make that treaty. And uh, my total conjecture, this part's just total feral conjecture, sure. uh, is that he will make that treaty and they will go ahead and get their temple built, but they're not going, this is not going to be the destruction of what the Dome of the Rock, they're going to build them side by side. It's going to become, that's okay, yep. it's, uh, that's my conjecture. That's totally. my idea too. <laughs> I think they're going to build them side by There's side. There's no way in heck they're going to get rid of that Dome of yeah. the Rock. Yeah. Well, they're gonna, it would take God. It would be a treaty. <laughs> yeah, it'd have right. to be an earthquake or a, Well, do you think there's something when it says to leave out a certain place for the Gentiles? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Is he talking exactly. about the Dome of the Rock? Revelation, probably is. Revelation 11, you and, know, and don't measure course, the court of the Gentiles. Of course, I'm very much a Dome of the Spirits as the Holy of Holies person, meaning I don't think the Dome of the Rocks where the temple was. That is such a rabbit trail. Yeah, it is a rabbit trail. But anyway, <laughs> I think they will sit. The City of David? <laughs> the City of David, <laughs> Sorry. I rule out. A lot of people like that one. I know, I know, I know, I uh, know. There's two, and that's a whole nother rabbit trail. Right, uh, right. Rabbits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put the rabbits back in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. So let's kind of get back to the story we were telling um, about 2020 when we're trying to find this midpoint that fits Daniel's what numbers. What year do these numbers How actually work? 1,290 and 1,260 days work. And one of the key things that has been a big hang up in trying to interpret that is in the verse that it says, and from the time it'll be 1290 days. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. Well, that from and, and is not in the, it's inferred. There, there are no prepositions in Hebrew. So okay. I realized that it could be to the time instead of from the time, because if you read it from the time, you're trying to make this thing work in a way that you'll never get to fit. Mathematics. Right. It just doesn't work. Okay. Well, would you read I, it? I didn't let you do it though. She <laughs> fought me on it until <laughs> I, I went into what one of my favorite study tools is blue letter Bible, where you can go to any verse and look at the Hebrew and dissect it. Okay. There's, there's this website called blue letter Bible that you can actually read everything in Hebrew. Awesome. Oh, and it's awesome by the way. Oh, wow. or, or Greek That's how I Hebrew discovered Hebrew. it. And she wouldn't buy it. So she, she had to call Auburn Gilead and say, is this possible? Can you actually read it <laughs> to the time instead of from the time? Okay. And anyway, he and point for Farrell. I, I actually want that one. Yeah, uh, right. anyway. He said, absolutely. You <laughs> so in order, well, you guys are definitely doing footwork yourself, you know, Give yes. yourself some credit. Yeah. <laughs> so when you put those two together, you got 1290 days and then 1260 days. What's that day? Well, it's first fruits. Well, now that I know that, I got this crazy task. A pattern. I've got to figure out what year that works because in the Hebrew, you got so many variables that it doesn't work every year. It well it comes to find out the odds of it working as it's worked is 385 million to one. When, That's unbelievable. When all Daniel's numbers, all of them, all wow. the numbers came together. It's it's so astronomically, the, almost theoretically impossible that you know it had to be God-given uh, because or they Gabriel all given. come together. <laughs> so yeah, Gabriel <laughs> gives it to Daniel. That's true. Anyway, so, which is fun, by the way, another rabbit trail. Our picture of our chart, you got you to appreciate the fact you got you got Daniel here, and you got Gabriel and Michael, Michael all talking to each other. That's what the Is background Daniel's picture. Up? When I had my son, or we, it's a we, had well, our we son. A son, right? <laughs> <laughs> when we had him do the chart, I says, I want the chart to progress 
pictures behind it with the timeline. Through the signs in the heavens. Do you yeah. guys have something I you can send me that I could put up while you're pointing to that? Yeah, yeah. we do. And we, we do. actually do more. Where I can kind of up close on it. And people, you guys can order these, right? Yes, yeah. people can order these. Absolutely. Okay, they just go to your website and get, yep. get yeah, a time and, and it has all the scriptures by all the different pieces. Literally, so look them up yourself. Sent out awesome. five of them already. So cool. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm in this night when I've I figured out that this has got to be the structure, but now I've got to test the data. When does it work on our calendar? Yeah, when does it work, and what years do it does it work? And so that night. Um, it was back in the end of January, 2020. I was laying there and I couldn't sleep. I just couldn't sleep. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I, I need to do stuff and I can't sleep and I can't sleep. And I thought, you know, this is crazy. I'm just laying here. I might as well get up and be productive. So I decided, well, I'm going to go. This is the night I'm going to go in and I'm really going to start plugging in all the data. And so what I did is I started taking... And I use the astronomy software because the Hebrew calculated appointed times can sometimes be off a date. And I proved that from the actual sightings, the witnessed events. In the Bible, they had to be sighted. Had to be witnessed. In fact, Revelation, the two witnesses that witness. They are witnessing. They are witnessing a trumpet's event. Oh, okay. So that it's a temple ceremonial thing that's all going on in Revelation. It's all temple Hebrew temple. Okay, so back to this this date that I started plugging. I started plugging in all these dates using Starry Night Pro to confirm astronomically and every way these appointed times that these numbers can work on. And then having the computer calculate between and then the number I, of days between. Yeah, the and the first one I searched was 2030 to be that crossover event day. Okay, and the reason I picked that is because of Hosea 6.2, where he says, after two days, I will revive you. And we were, we've were we been promoters of that. You can kind of get it also from the woman at the well prophecy. We have a video on that where we talk about this two days of the Gentile time. Can, can I just read the verse for those people that aren't familiar? Hosea 6.2, go yeah. ahead. Come and let us return to the Lord. He's quoting Isaiah 19 here. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten, but he will bind us up. So this is kind of the restoring of the eagle back to its original. But it says, after two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up and we wow. will live in sight. Okay, so that two days, we've we've always, we've known that for quite a while, a lot of research we've done. So the, the two days, if you understand when the woman at the well occurred was 30 A.D., and um, in 30 AD, the uh, is when Christ he, began, he began his ministry, ministry to, the in, to the Gentiles. He went to the woman at the well, and that's when the two days starts. We call it a soft start because obviously the hard start is Acts chapter two, Acts chapter Pentecost. Two, Pentecost, you know, when time it got well, I would say it's actually when he curses the fig tree. That's when he curses Israel's priesthood, right. more or less. Okay. That's when he totally rejects the Jews. Is when he, the last week of his life, when he curses the fig tree, that's figurative of him cursing their priesthood lineage works. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's, that's what that is all about, is it's a type of a shadow of him rejecting their works. And their, and then obviously in Acts chapter two is this complete hard start. Anyway, so when he, Peter told to take it to the Gentiles. So that two days from 2000, from the woman of the well is 2030 is. We should probably say is, that the Gentiles. From 30 AD to 2030 is 2000 years, two days of, of the Gentiles. For those that don't know what we're talking about, when we say Gentiles, that is simply when the gospel was taken to the nations. In Hebrew, Gentiles is goyim, and it's translated literally nations. Yeah, it just so. means yeah, the nations. Okay. The Jews like to use that word a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. They, they, Go they like to use it for anybody, not us, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so when I when I checked 2030 as that crossover date, it didn't work, and I was like, "Oh wow, a bust!" You know, I totally expected it to work. 
I mean, that's 200 years <clears> since <throat> the church was restored. So much going on. And so I thought, oh, that's totally a, a, a bust. What's the deal? And then I remembered the whole day. It says, after two days. So I thought, well, I'll check the next year. And I checked the next year and the It was milk- like hitting seven sevens. Yeah, on the all of a sudden, like, everything, everything lined everything up. Fell into place. And <laughs> all of a sudden, all of those numbers landed on prophetic days. All your 1290, first fruits, uh, all of that, and even the beginning of the daily sacrifice, all of it lined up on the fir- on the feast days or all the... Moedim, the point wow. of And when all these lined up, of course, that was the second thing I tried, and I had an educated guess of where to look. So I was quite happy, although at that time I was just checking two numbers. Wait, you have to tell me you woke me up. So, <laughs> I was, I, well, before I woke her up, I know her really well, by the way. <laughs> We've only been married almost 44 years, coming up here real quick. Okay. <laughs> So we, we we got to know each other quite well in 44 years. Anyway, and the long and short of it is I knew the first question that would come out of her mouth is, does it work any other year? So I spent the rest of the night figuring all the way from 2020, that year we were in, at that time when I was doing the research. 50 years out. Clear to 2070. I checked every appointed time. Wow. And none of them worked except for one, just one. That's just two of the four numbers. And those two of those four numbers were just the 1290 and 1260. That's just those two. And they only worked once. And they only worked once in 50 years. The next 50 years. And I actually, at that time, I said, I'm not going to figure any further than that because I'm going to be dead by then. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, do you now, how are you guys on a time not to get sidetracked, but um, I always had, I keep having this feeling about, I'm not date setting, but 2033 is this thing. And I know that's a whole other topic. It's actually but, 2034, believe it or not. not okay. 20. So you guys are on the same page with that. Exactly. Okay. So we're uh, talking okay. Adam on Dayaman, not three and a half years later. Well, yeah, right, three and a half right. years yeah. later is all right. that. Adam <laughs> on Dayaman's 31. That's why I brought that up. Okay. And, and you know, that's a good thing to talk about. This whole Matthew, you know, no man know the day or the hour. Two things to say about that. Number one. That is the exact terminology referred to as the Feast of Trumpets. It is the day and hour no man knoweth. That is the name That's the, of the name day of trumpets. Of the day of the, trumpets. That's Hebrew. another name of it. Okay? Because it's a witnessed event in the sky. And they had to witness it. You don't it. know if you're going to see that new moon that's going to start the year in the first day or the second day. But the second thing that's real important. But it's not implying that no man doesn't have the right to know. Exactly. No, and, and, and because Joseph Smith said so. Uh, right. Joseph Smith actually right. came out and said that later. Um, well, not later than this, but later than Matthew. Well, people <laughs> made it so blasphemous that you should not try to figure out these come like why the, like why know. did Gabriel give those numbers? You know? <laughs> right, right. So when we put this all together and then we had to add the other two numbers, because there are two more numbers. We've only been talking about 1290 and 1260. We got to talk about the other two numbers, 2300 days and 1335 Before days. Before you do, you got to tell what happened when when you woke me up. Oh, You didn't finish the story. So, oh, yeah. So I woke her up and I, I was actually crying because this was, when it was he, so when impactful and I had such a downpouring of the spirit. I was just, just overcome. And I remember actually, well, we were talking after I woke her up. And I says, I've solved Daniel's numbers. And she's like, her eyes all of a sudden popped wide open. You know, she's like, um, and, tell me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm ready. Tell me. <laughs> you got <Tell> me <laughs> up now. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. This is about five o'clock in the morning, maybe 530 in the morning. I'd been working almost all night um, on plugging in the data. And, uh, 
so I told her what was happening and that and you told me there was a there was a reversal there was a reversal in the middle because of Daniel 12 verse 7 where it says time times and half the time left after Michael stands anyway I laid that whole reversal out and the whole layout in DNC 88 and I says it crosses over in 31 at Adam on Deam and and then three and a half years later is when Christ comes to the Mount of Olives um and Hippo Mount on the Mount of Olives anyway and that's and when he said that it crosses over and there's a great reversal in the center I had a download because I've studied Isaiah enough to know that is exactly what the scriptures say and when when he said Daniel's numbers cross over I had a witness that he figured it out 30 40 years ago we thought things were solidified doctrine. Now we're finding out these were men's opinions. I know I said this at the beginning of the podcast. They're good men's opinions, which is right. good. You know, there's nothing, and we should not, we should not lose faith in our leaders if they made a bad. Well, not McConkie, bad. Uh, McCon- if they made a wrong call doctrinally or something. I mean, McConkey actually you know, came right out and says, I had to repent of this particular thing. Right, right. You know? And he didn't write that as an apostle either. Yeah. He wrote it yeah. way so before. That just, and that doesn't make McConkie any less of a man. For goodness sakes, I've made a... Uh, Actually, anyway. it's a, a greater man that can say, hey, I, 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 I didn't have this right. And that's... Well, and not, the reason I'm bringing that up is to let a lot of people that come on know, look, this... These aren't solidified doctrines. The they're allowed. The Pickerings are allowed to speculate on this, come up with conclusions, and have their ideas about a, a end times timeline because there's no um, substantiated. Uh, you know what I mean? Sure. Well, and Glenn Beck said it best when we presented the stuff to Glenn Beck. <laughs> he said it best. He says, "Well, we'll know if you're right by the end of 24." <laughs> so if we get to the end of the 24 and the daily sacrifice hasn't started over in the right list, right and we, we can figure out then you can pretty much go okay the pick reads missed the mark okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's pretty much a given and you know i i think the pattern is still accurate that it points to the appointed times but yeah, i'm not going to say that on the calendar somewhere else yeah, that yeah, we didn't yeah i'm discover, not going to say you know? that i knew for sure where it's going to fit. Right. The uh, journey you know, doesn't end. You yeah. just keep trying to figure yeah, things exactly. out. Yeah. Anyway, that being said, um, we don't often agree. Right out of the gate. Because, well, for one thing, we come at things so differently. I'm coming she's, from Isaiah. He's coming well, from And she's, <laughs> we call it, you know, she's kind of the facts kind of person who builds builds facts I, I build and has this, algebraically and she has all this yep, foundation of facts and me i kind of fly over at the at the thirty thousand foot level and say well this is what it looks like he's the yeah. one saying no <laughs> I, I don't want to have the equation i want to know how they found the equation you know yeah. that's that's right I, that's just the way we think and so we come at it overview and build it from the roots. bottom right you know, and so I'm overviewing and she's grassroots. I mean, the way I study is the same. When I was doing this study, I probably read the book of Revelation, oh, 30 to 50 times. I read the book of Daniel 30 to 50 times. I read the DNC 88. He absorbs it. I just have to get this overall picture of what's going on. And then the pieces start to fit together. And that's how I, I realized that Daniel's talking about the same event, the DNC 88, the Thessalonians and Paul, they're all talking about and the I same thing. And I build it chiasm by chiasm, by word structure, by word link. And, and We're great that. for each other in a sense. Oh, you get into the chiasmus and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Right? Oh, yeah. She's, well, this, she's this whole book is structure. the literary structures in Isaiah. And once you see the structures in Isaiah, you start to see them everywhere. I mean, they're in the Doctrine and Covenants. Right. Mormon, they're everywhere. So, so back to our story. Yes. We get keep sidetracked. I'm yeah. sorry. I sidetracked uh, no, it's you guys okay. a little bit too. Anyway, so she uh, she says, so does it happen any other time? So I do exactly what she was going to say. So I checked. And I says, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, that being said, that was just two of the numbers, by the way, that night. 
I started sharing that with a few close friends and with her and different things. And, and we got talking about the other numbers, which are in Daniel uh, chapter 8 also. And 12. Uh, and 12, where it talks about the 1335 and the 2300 days. And those are both and, and that's what referring. We, told we said, wait a minute. If your numbers are right, then the other numbers have to fit in too. So where did the 2,300 days and the 1,300 days? So we were having this conversation, <laughs> and these numbers are all about the daily sacrifice. The 2,300 and the 1,335 are all about daily sacrifice stuff. And so well, and there's been a lot of opinions about that. 1,335 says more blessed is he that arrives to the That's true. It's, it's not about the daily sacrifice. <clears throat> See there, Sorry. she's dotting yeah. my eyes. <laughs> she's dotting my eyes and crossing my teeth, which is good. Okay, but it's talking about the daily sacrifice, which is twenty three hundred. So we're having this conversation around the 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 table, and we're with a group of friends, and they say, "Well, these other two numbers got to work if your numbers are right." I says, "Yeah, they do." Anyway, good point. Uh, good point. So I just start talking. And they're like, "We'll go figure it out." So I'm like, yeah, well, I, you guys are all right here. You're now. Really it's like right Thanksgiving. Now. <laughs> go. <laughs> and it wasn't Thanksgiving. It was, I know. It was, it was a holiday. It was, I don't I, remember. We were just one. getting together. <laughs> it's a Sunday. Anyway, so I reluctantly left the crowd, went into the computer, and started calculating from that central date, 2300 back and 2300 forward and 1335 forward and back. And then I had to confirm what those days were on a Hebrew calendar. And astronomically. Hebrew and astronomically. And lo and behold, they both landed on Hanukkah. And when he walked out of his office, his face was just like pale. And we're all like, what did you find out? And he says, both of them land on appointed times 10 years apart. I mean, it's crazy, this stuff. And so... Wow. And so when you understand what Hanukkah is, Hanukkah is the Feast of Dedication. Okay? It is the day that when, remember I talked earlier about the type of Antiochus Epiphanes being an Antichrist character? Yes. Okay? Well, the Maccabees rededicated the temple on Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, so that they could restart the sacrifice. And these numbers are connected with the daily sacrifice. So they all connect to Hanukkah. So if the Hanukkah daily sacrifice starts on Hanukkah this year, this year. like Daniel this numbers predict, to. then you know the trigger is rolling. And you know that these numbers are correct and that that chart is exactly correct in every way. Wow. Now, if it doesn't, then, you know. We better go back. <laughs> I guess it's like back to class for Farrell, you know. <laughs> it's, um, do you, you know, just on a side note, do you feel things happening that are leading up to that? Absolutely. Um, We've been to Israel twice this year because the red heifers. before they can start the offering, they have to have a red heifer. Right. And, and now do they have an unblemished one now? Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. They still oh, have wow. three of them sitting there waiting. To, actually, and they were planning we've to been do it. Tracking the red heifers in detail because yeah, these of, three uh, they actually took five to Israel. We're very close with the guy who brought them into Israel from Texas, actually. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they actually were planning on doing the red heifer offering on the Mount of Olives on this Passover pass. That's why we were in Israel on Passover, right? Um, That's why we but flew out with like 300 missiles, Kevin. Yeah, the 300 missiles. Oh, my goodness. There when we, you guys any, were right any, there, huh? Yeah, and so we're in Israel, and if you've seen that video, I don't know if you have, where the, the leader of Hamas is saying the reason we attacked was the red heifers. He actually says that. Oh, he said oh, it actually says Is this the one that's deceased now? I'm sure he is. I'm, uh, I'm well, sure they've taken him out by now. But he did. He made the announcement on the hundredth day anniversary after the attack. That the um, reason they attacked. That the on reason that they day attacked was the because they had the audacity to bring those red cows into Israel. Oh my goodness! And so Israel got cold feet, and the, the well, they didn't government. Get but the Temple Institute isn't really like majorly backed by all the not at all conservative no, and, and these prophecies happen. 
So that's the problem is you got the secular government saying, no, you can't do it yet. That'll start a war. It'll start more war. It'll start more problems. So what has got to come to happen is they've got to come. You've got to get these two. So they actually canceled it. Why? So we flew to Israel, and I won't say in vain because we were able to do so much without all the people there. We were able to just go to everything and see everything and test so much research. It was beautiful. Anyway, that being said, they're still holding these red heifers, and they're still they were the next target date they had was. Pentecost, Shavuot. Shavuot, Pentecost. So we went back to Israel. So we Pentecost. went back for that, and then they still had cold feet. So they're still waiting. But when I There's produced no the information time. that's in this book, there was no red heifers. They didn't even know they had any. They didn't even know where they'd find them. And they found them and moved them to Israel in And they're exactly the right age at exactly the right time for these numbers of Daniel to come down. So the answer is, do we see things moving? Absolutely. Everything's happening. Um, and well, and even what's going on with our elections here, that's kind of interesting. Even, as with Eagle, yeah. everything is just weaving together in this It says and, that in, in, in Ezra Eagle, it says that the, the main head wakes up at the, basically at the time of the third feather, which is this next coming election. And that feathers three and four are eaten up. Now, if you do your word linking and you cross-reference through scripture, what, when do things get eaten up? There's only one place that actually uses it exactly eaten up, and that's in Isaiah chapter 5, when the hedge of the vineyard is broken down and the vineyard is eaten up by an invasion. So whether or not we're dealing with a, a, a war on the inside or war on the outside, it's still the definition of being eaten up in scripture. Right. Through it. Yeah. So all these, you say, do we see? I see it all. Now, am I, what's <clears> happening <throat> in Jerusalem and what's happening in America. And even the fact that they haven't offered the red heifer yet is a little alarming to me because the Lord is a, a Lord of last minute saves. When Samuel made the prophecy that in five years, you'd see the sign of the day and the night and the day of light. It came down to the last minute wire, you know. So he he actually waited till the very night of and says, "This night shall the sign be fulfilled." When they're going to be killed the next day? Well, Red Sea is the same type of event. This back to the Red Sea. The the Egyptian army is there to to kill them and wipe them out. And that's when he does the save. And that seems to be the pattern that the Lord operates on. Can I chase the bunny? I don't know. What's the bunny? Yeah, go for <laughs> it. Well, it's just that these these red heifers and everything, number one, you need to understand that the red heifer is not a prophetically appointed time. It's just something that has to happen before these prophetically appointed right. times. In other yeah. words, there's no time uh, crunch on that. Right. And and I just, just have want, to be before right. I just wanted to go to Ezekiel 36 and chase this rabbit really fast because this is where the prophecy of the of the red heifer uh, being offered is is given. And it's the end of the chapter uh, 36 in Ezekiel. And if you notice the verbiage, it's setting a stage for what's got to be going on in Israel. So listen to verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Clean water is the ashes mixed into the water. That's what they're referring to. A pool of Siloam that they're excavating right now. Um, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. And the Lord is talking about Israel as a nation here. A nation turning back to God. And I will cleanse you. And a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Now, by the way, when Orson Hyde said his dedicatory prayer in Jerusalem, he prayed those exact words, okay? And then it says, and I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them, and you will dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. 
It's a recovery. And that's what happened at Mount Sinai after the Red Sea event. And so we're looking between now and Hanukkah of this year, by the way, which falls the day after Christmas on our calendar this yeah. year. Um, we're looking at, at something that's going to bring Israel's heart back to God as a nation. Well, and let so me ask, a, can I ask context. something? Go ahead. Do you think it, <clears throat> what's happening with uh, the, this war and uh, maybe the attempt to take out Hamas might open doors for a temple I to happen? Do you think that's significant? Did, Rhonda just got to look like, yeah, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You don't get the cart before the horse. Okay, if you okay. look in Ezra chapter 3, okay, when they went back from Babylon to rebuild the temple there, the first thing they did was the offerings. They did started the offerings before they put in the foundation for right. the new temple. And so the first thing that you're looking, yes, it's going to open the way, but, I mean, otherwise Hamas wouldn't have I mean, I, I mean, as far as said. not having all that, pushback do you think it's significant that is that jerusalem is taking out the bad guys or trying to i think it's not done yet yeah because if you look at no no ezra, i know if you look at so, ezra and nehemiah as a type you have to realize that when they built that wall when they were building that temple they had a sword in one hand and a shovel in the other and so it, it was happening so simultaneously yeah, yes. we don't know exactly how it's going to look, think, but we know that they'll do the offerings before they build the temple. I think the war is going to expand before it contracts. I think you're going to see the north totally open up. I think you're going to see Israel win both the Hamas, Gaza, so now we're and up in the, right? up in the so. Hezbollah arena. I think it's going to open up, and when I say open up, it's... It's going to be coming out right. I mean, I don't know how you don't call it war already. Well, the and what I was asking, wouldn't that make it easier for the temple to be built? I'm talking yes. about, yes. that's what Prepare I meant. Prepare the way. You yeah. think and that I, this war is kind of taming down some of that pushback so that the temple could be built. And I actually think you're going to see that escalate, which brings about the treaty with the Antichrist. Um, but I also think America is going to go into a lot of chaos between now and then and we're going to be having our own problems we're going to be having enough of our own problems that we're going to stop dictating to israel what they need to do and is that why we maybe aren't seen there or do you think yeah, we're seen i don't there? think we're going to be involved because i think yeah we're going to have enough of our own trouble that we're going to be focused here at home and um, so i think you're going to see that release Israel to just more operate on their own instead of having us over top of them saying, oh, you can't do this. But there's that. key junctures of interaction and prophecy. Like, for instance, um, when the Zion in, in the New Jerusalem, when there's an attack being launched on in America, it says that there's an attack. Daniel says there's an attack launched back over at home, which causes that army to withdraw and so yeah. you, you have to keep the all the prophecies that are interacting together straight because there's a prophecy here for the New Jerusalem in America and a prophecy for Jerusalem in the Old Jerusalem. And Ether 13 is super clear on that. And then, and I was going to say, you know, we talked in the middle, in the, at the very beginning, we said, you know, how does this interfa interface with Christianity? And what you need to understand is that that is the key point that our Christian friends don't understand is that there is a Zion that's built on this, the American continent, and that there are two sets of prophecies going on. And that's what Daniel's numbers showed is that our deliverance is at Adam on Diamond here in America, but the Drew old Jerusalem's deliverance is three and a half years later at the Mount of Olives. And we could, we couldn't have come up with this stuff if we'd have tried. We couldn't have invented this. Yeah, it's this was the way the numbers out. played out. The scriptures and the numbers just laid out the structure. And, you know, we have a lot of people even like Glenn Beck ask us, so what do we do with this? And the answer is, you know, we don't know all the details. We just know. Be faithful. The, yeah, be faithful. Be, I mean. Trust God. Trust God. Be faithful. Do Always be prepared. Right? Yeah. I mean, as far as, 
you know, a hour by hour, minute by minute layout. We don't have that. But like, Brigham and we're Young's, not supposed to. Like Brigham Young said, be prepared, but plant your cherry trees. You know, right. you got to have cherries. <laughs> That's right. So in That's essence, right. we are in a position where, you know, even though this structure seems rock solid to us, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously leave it open that I could, I could have missed something. I'm human, you know? Um, but from everything we can see, they're solid and everything keeps backing it up. Ezra Ziegel's backing it up. Um, what I've returned AA, which is after Adam, I actually, this is the, the last year or two project that I've done. This is since about 22 or the beginning of 23. We'll just keep I started more working on back it up. the chronology. What just happened? Um, oh, I what happened? How much time do you guys have left? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, we're wrapping right. it we're up right. right now. Okay. Okay. Did I interrupt a whole bunch? I'm sorry. I no, you're I didn't. fine. You're fine. I'm just wondering, do you still see us? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. Cause I hear you. I see you, but we'll just keep going. We'll just keep going because I can't see you anymore, but I can hear you. Wrap it up whenever you want to. But did you, were you able to get everything in that you needed to? I I think we're doing good. Um, but what I started to say is about this. I started doing the chronology of the Bible. I took the chronology of Genesis and, uh, I actually just took in Genesis six, where it talks about Adam being 130 years when Seth was born and et cetera, et cetera. And I took and I figured and laid that all out and got clear to the birth of Abraham in the lineup of chronology by using scripture. And I can date the birth of Abraham based astronomically, off of, astronomically off of the book of Jasher. Because we have the fulfillment in the sky using astronomy software of what happened at Abraham's birth. So that links Genesis to our calendar using astronomy software where a big planet came and gobbled up five other yeah. planets. Anyway, that also I've linked. So I've not just done it once. I've done it by multiple linking of also the, uh, eclipse that happened over Nineveh and the library that dates that the secular library, the Nineveh of Nineveh library. Yeah. dates that eclipse. And that links to the dedication of the Solomon's temple and then we have well and that's why astronomy is so important because absolutely. you can get these absolutely locked in dates no matter what everybody's calendar did you know exactly and then we have this last ingredient of saint jerome's record of the jubilees and the mm-hmm. and, and and the dating Olympia. of christ's crucifixion and everything they all perform in concert together and they all come up with the same the conclusions same thing Daniel. <laughs> that this whole thing wipes wraps up in the Hebrew year that starts in the fall of 2030 and goes to the fall of 2031 being the end of the 6,000 years. I, I, that's it. See, that's key right there because what's that scripture that says in two days, he will raise us up. Yep. Um, is that Micah? Hosea six. Hosea. Two. Yes. Hosea. Yeah. And, and then you've got DNC 77 that says 7,000 years are appointed under this earth. And I can date that the 6,000 years comes to an end statistically within two or three years of 2031. And the dead center is 2031 Passover or the fall of 2030 being the beginning of the year, the fall of 2031 being the end of that, that first crossover period. And you're saying maybe 2034 is a, is a complete ushering in to the, the next phase of thousand years of peace on earth. Exactly. Well, Uh, it's certainly not going to be peace on earth till Jesus Christ takes out the armies of the world that are gathered against Jerusalem in 2034. So, right, right. Yeah. After the siege, I mean, after he comes to the Mount of Olives and he's exactly, and and what is it, two thirds of the Jerusalem? Exactly. Jews will be annihilated. Yeah, exactly. And the rest will say, What are these wounds? in your hands and your feet and he was on the Mount of Olives. Yeah. 
So another thing that's really fascinating about all that, uh, when you link it all together, is that you need to keep in mind that DNC 77 tells us that the millennium starts, yes, he starts to rule, but it starts with judgment. So the judgment of the book of so Revelation. The, the question in DNC 77 is when do the events of Revelation 8 and 9 happen? And without looking up Revelation 8 and 9, you read right over top of it. But those are the trumps of judgment. Yeah, we're talking the judgment actually starts at the beginning of the millennium. So most of us think the beginning of the millennium is when the, la is the whatever. lamb lies down with the with the lion, so to speak. Well, the yeah. answer is it starts with the him tribulation. taking things back in hand and saying, no, man's had his time to rule. It's my time to rule. And the first thing he does is whip us into order, so to speak. Uh, that sounds maybe a little brash, but, you know, he uses... Well, signs so in the heavens has declared himself to be God, and, and he has to say no. It's, it's yeah, it's basically it's a big confrontation. Time. It's the time that he comes in as Lord of Lords, and that's the beginning of the seven thousand years. And it says yep. it twice in DNC seventy seven that those trumps of judgment sound in the beginning of the seven thousand years. So that's another misnomer. Everybody thinks the millennium starts and everything's all. Happy during afterwards. No. Well, no, we've got the end of the millennium too, which is yeah. going to be well, another. exactly right. Right. So there's tons, tons of things that are coming down that are just really uh, exciting but, to be by honest. By the way, which is another prophetic appointment at the end of the millennium. <laughs> the eighth That's great day. The resurrection at the end of the. Rhonda, is there any last words that you would like to? Um, God is good. We should be overjoyed at the at the time that we live to see prophecies come to pass and to play our role whether it's 144,000 or whether it's to be an abinadi or to make a final testimony and lay your life down no matter what your mission is this is the time guys this is it jesus is coming how cool is that this is the great <laughs> victory we're in for the great victory right here christ That's right I'm talking not ours necessarily but it's ours too if we're on his side it, it can be our great victory so um just very very uh very very excited for the most part and you know that's not the normal answer you get most people are scared to death of the uh end times um personally i it's like reading a great book it's the the we're coming into the Climactic, climactic tense part. Yeah, we're coming into, you know, to use the Oakland, you know, Frodo is about to throw the ring into Mount Norton. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we're about to. The they, are they are geeks. They are geeks. They are geeks. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you go ahead. You were, you guys were saying thanks for being here and. Yeah, I would say thanks so much, Troy, for, for inviting us to yeah. be on your show. It's been my pleasure. We love the opportunity to share with people. Will you please you know, come don't, back? Don't believe yeah, us. There's, there's so much. Right? Yes, don't believe us. Read the scriptures. It, Check it, it out. It's not Read our scriptures. Our books. It doesn't matter what we think. <laughs> but there's so much outlining, contributing evidence to this that we haven't had time to address. I mean, we spent five and a half hours with Glenn Beck and didn't get done, so... You know, well, will you guys come back? I know you're busy and you have a busy yeah. schedule. We will Even if it's in a month, two months, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to. Okay, good. Um, I would like to say whether you believe, we know that we will one day be caught up into heaven, folks. And I'm not sitting here going, oh, this is absolutely what I believe. But whether you believe it's uh, before, if, whether you believe in a tribulation period or not, whether you believe in a post-trib, pre-trib, uh, what is it? Post trip, mid trip, <laughs> mid trip, being caught up into the the heavens. We know the Lord will come and do amazing things. Check it out. It's interesting. It's called food for thought. We're just talking, and this is their ideas. And thank you as well, uh, Farrell and Rhonda, for being here. You guys are very nice, humble people. And I'm looking at your your kitchen back there. That's some nice woodwork. Oh, and, thank uh, you. And I see the. Uh, 
the um, the Ark and Covenant behind you too as well. Yeah, that's kind of fun. We actually it's hard to get back from Israel. I'm yeah, we, we brought that back from Israel. And if we didn't ca- cover everything, we'll do it again next time because this is all it, it's all together. Whether you're talking about Revelations, Isaiah, Daniel, um, and going on and on and on. It's all Absolutely. weaving a beautiful tapestry. All right, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.